Hi everybody, we're starting our new series looking into five of the most important moments in the Easter story in Luke's Gospel. This is our first story and we'll see the return of the king to his capital city, Jerusalem. Now Luke has told us in his Gospel that Jesus has been teaching and proving that he is the promised king all around the country. And now for the first time he'll be arriving in the capital city. How do you think a king would come to claim his city? How would he arrive? Have a look at these couple of pictures of other important people making a grand entrance. To impress everybody with your power and strength, you would want the most spectacular parade. You'd have soldiers or knights in armour or chariots, tanks, helicopters, planes, perhaps a limousine with bodyguards and photographers. But when Jesus arrives, making his big entrance, he carefully chooses how to do it. He chose a donkey. And it wasn't even his donkey. He had to borrow it from somebody. Isn't it funny? It would be like our queen arriving to her palace on a child's scooter. Even though there was no red carpet rolled out to welcome him, the crowds throw their coats on the ground to make one. <coughs> and they shout, God bless the king who comes in the name of the Lord. There is peace in heaven and glory to God. This is what they meant by their shouting. Praise be to God. God bless the king. He comes and is sent by God himself. God's promised king is finally arriving in Jerusalem. He's home to rule. Would he be crowned? Would he rule by force and get rid of the Romans? Everyone was clear. The people were worshipping Jesus as God's own king. He was riding on a donkey to keep a promise from hundreds of years before. That's written about in the Bible. Hundreds of years before Jesus arrived, it was written. And that he would bring peace and victory. But the religious leaders wanted to silence the crowds. How dare Jesus allow them to say that he is a king, God's final king? Jesus had a really interesting response for them. If they keep quiet, the stones will cry out, he says. Imagine that, stones speaking and shouting. Now, stones, they don't have mouths. Stones, they can't speak. But Jesus says that he has to be praised. And if the people are told to be quiet, then the silent, mouthless stones will have to shout out instead. That's how right it is for Jesus to be praised as God's king. We have a choice. Will we shout and sing and worship the king? Or will we try to shut up the praise, push Jesus back into the shadows? It may sound dramatic, but that is the choice. It's all or nothing. You can't just like Jesus from a distance and avoid having him in your life. It doesn't work like that. Jesus arrived in Jerusalem on a donkey. He looked ordinary and gentle. He didn't come to take control of your heart and your life by powerful force with a sword. Even though he has power over everything, he comes in weakness to save us by love and gentleness. So shout for Jesus. Throw what you have on the floor at his feet because Jesus is way better than anything or anyone else. He's worth giving everything for.